This video describes the ED3 active extremity dosimeter. This is the case that the dosimeter comes in, it has two locks to open it, and what you'll see here are the different components of the ED3. This is the electronics unit, which contains the electronics for readout of the two detectors, one or two detectors. Most importantly, here are the detectors, as well as the connection. Then we have the charging system to charge with different international adapters, the USB to extract the data from the ED3, and then different methods of attaching the detector to the fingers or to the extremities. In the top of the box, there's room for calibration certificates, software, and any other uh, detectors that may be part of the system. This is the ED3 electronics unit. It has a display, two buttons that we'll discuss later, as well as two connectors for the two detectors, potentially one for each hand or for different extremity locations, although now optionally also for eye dosimetry. On the back, you push on the back end here and then flip the unit open and you'll see connectors for USB, which is a way to extract the data from the unit after use, a power adapter for charging the internal battery, and then also a switch to turn the unit on and off. There are several detectors for the ED3. They're characterized by having the detector end, the silicon diode detector end, the lead, then a serial number, and the connector that connects to the electronics unit itself. Since this one has a black end instead of being red, I can tell this is a D1 detector. Also, on the detector face, to show the front end where the silicon detector or the diode is located, you'll see a small imprinted pattern that lets us know that's the face from a calibration standpoint or from an orientation standpoint. This is a D4 detector. You'll notice it looks very much like a D1 detector, so to distinguish between the two, this one has a red sleeve around the end and also a red sleeve here to show its uh, designation as a D4 detector. It also still has a serial number to identify uh, different ones and relate it back to the calibration certificate. This shows the difference between the D1 and D4 detectors. To start with, the D1 detector is wrapped in black at the beginning at the end of the lead, near the detector end and near the connector end, while the D4 detector has red. The D1 detector is able to measure photons starting around 60 keV upward, but is not able to measure betas. It has a much flatter energy response and stays within the IEC guidelines. On the D4 detector, the energy response is lower down to 33 keV and is also able to measure high energy betas, such as strontium, but because of its over response, it does not stay within the IEC recommendations or requirements. This detector is the new eye dosimetry detector with a plastic cap to simulate HP3 as far as its density. It still has the lead, the serial number, and the connector for the ED3 electronics. So shared between all three detector types are similarities with, res with respect to the detector and its connection to the electronics itself, as well as a serial number to uniquely identify it and trace it back to its calibration certificate. When working with the detectors, you want to make sure that you don't put any sharp kinks or any sort of tight bend in, in any of the areas along the lead, near the head of the detector, or the connection itself. If you do this over time, the internal stranded wires will start to fail, and you will see either high counts, random counts, or the unit will think there's no detector connected. To connect the detector to the unit, it's a simple matter of taking the detector lead end and making sure it fits properly into the cavity here. It's a matter of actually rocking it slightly to make sure it's properly seated and then pushing it on. And you'll hear a quick click when it's properly inserted. There is a possibility to add two detectors. They must be of the same type. So either a D1 in both positions or a D4 in both positions or an eye dosimeter in each position. You're not allowed to mix detector types. The ED3 has two lines of display. The top line is numerical information for the dose or dose rate value. The bottom line is status, such as battery status, whether the unit is in dose or dose rate mode for D or R, 
and also the units of measure, whether they be SI or US units. It's divided in half. On the left is detector one and on the right is detector two. Normally the display is in a solid mode, either with the backlight on or off. And when the alarm sounds, the unit will actually start to flash the display. Should the display be solid and the alarm still sounding, this means it's in dose overload or dose rate overload mode and not accurately measuring dose anymore or the dose rate anymore due to the overload of the electronics or the detector. This shows the audio alarms that are available on the ED3. Some of these alarms are programmable, such as the standard chirp, while others are fixed. When using the ED3 and the detectors, you want to make sure you keep the system outside of very high EMI environments. One example would be putting a cell phone very close to the detector because of the long lead, even though it's shielded, the high EMI can cause interference and show up as counts inside of the system. This can also apply to other types of devices as well that emit high EMI, so it's best just to avoid them. There are several methods to mount the ED3 detector onto uh, the fingers or extremities. One is the simple finger cot. By putting the detector on and then moving the finger cot over the finger, you can see how you can actually get the detector easily mounted. There are several other methods, such as using an elastic band. Some people will actually use surgical tape or other types of tape. When using tape, be careful in two areas. One, that you don't try to rip the decimeter off your finger when you're done with the work. And secondly, is that you make sure the detector is clean from any residual uh, tape or glue or anything that might be stuck to it, just to keep it clean and also to avoid any buildup that might change the radiation dose or the attenuation of the radiation. This picture shows how an ED3 detector worn on the finger may be routed through the sleeve of coveralls, a lab coat, or protective clothing to a pocket or to a pouch worn by the user. To clean the detector, it's okay to use cleaning pads or moistened alcohol wipes or any other sort of sterilization method that you use, but you must not submit it to any sort of immersion in liquid. Uh, there's also gaseous types of sterilization that might be used as well. Each type, though, will be up to you and to determine whether or not it's sufficient for cleaning. In this case, I'm just going to use this cleaning wipe and wipe it down, including the lead of the detector, and that's all there is to it. So now, let's put the ED3 into operation. First, I'm going to make the connections for the detectors. I'll put two on in this case. So now we'll turn the unit on, and the first thing you'll see is the version of the firmware installed. The next you'll see the calibration information, and then you'll come to the date and time if it's been enabled on the software. This allows you to make a change if you want to the date and time. If you don't want the user or have to be bothered with this each time, you can disable it through the software that's run on the PC through the USB interface uh, to make changes to the parameters. So in this case, it's timed out, it's past the date and time, and now it's asking me if I want to reset the accumulated dose. And I'm going to say no in this case, so by pressing this button, I'm selecting no. There again, it timed out. You can see here that there's been some accumulated dose, and I have the units set to SI units. So I'm showing 0.7 and 111.6 microsieverts. Possibly I had my right hand as being my dominant hand closer to the radiation sources. By pressing on any of the buttons, I can turn on the backlight, which is a little bit harder for you to see the numbers, but also if I hold down on the left button, I can change from dose into dose rate. If I want to go back to dose, I just select the button again, hold it down, and it goes back to dose. If I go and hold the right button down, it'll change from SI units to US units. And the same then with the left button. If I hold down the left button, it'll go from milliram dose 
10 milligram per hour or dose rate. By holding down the right button one more time, I can go back to SI units. If I want to conserve battery power, I can put the unit into standby mode by holding both of the buttons down instead of turning the power switch off. But you have to remember to remind the user if they're putting it in standby to take it out of standby instead of thinking the unit's off and then switching the switch back and forth. Once we're finished with the unit, it's just a reverse process of opening the lid on the bottom and turning off the system. At this point, you could connect a USB cable and then download the data to the PC. But let's do something else. What we're going to do is disconnect both of the detectors and turn the unit on. The unit is smart enough to know if a detector is not connected. and it's telling us no probes are found, turn it off and retry. So we're going to go and add a probe back onto the unit and we're going to actually turn it back on you can see the cow whether or not we want to change the date and time we don't if we did, we just select yes and it would cycle through each of the date time um, sections. We're not going to reset the accumulated dose. And now because I only have one detector, you'll see just that side uh, populated with the accumulated dose. If I were to lose the detector, if it broke, if it pulled off uh, because of some mechanical reason, um, they, are, they are very solid on here not to come off naturally, but from a safety standpoint, they can break away. But if for some reason the detector became disconnected and you were worried about that to know whether or not there was a detector being monitored, when we pull it off, you'll notice it goes right into the, uh, the statement that the uh, probe uh, is unplugged. So a fairly good alarm to let you know. I can't just reconnect that connector because I have to reset the system at that point. By reconnecting the connector the alarm does not go off and it can't be silenced from the buttons. So I have to turn the unit off. When it's time to charge the unit, all you do is open up the back, select the charging adapter, plug it into the charging port, and then plugging it into the wall. The lights will indicate what's happening, so effectively when the unit is fully charged, the green light will come on and say ready. We'll discuss using the software in another video, but this is all there is to using the ED3 Active Extremity Dosimeter. Whether you want to use one detector or two detectors, it just depends on your environment.